head so I got caught on something and I almost died. But it's cool. We're here. Oh, there's the Tuesday night crotch shot to start things off. Uh, how we doing? Who's here? Slight delay getting rolled, rolling there. I thought I was going to have uh, a repeat of Thursday there, a technical issue on my phone, but turned out to be not a big deal. Hello, hello, Mark. We're drawing Black Panther tonight. I would, my plan had been to draw this last week, but um, uh, the uh, with uh, Kevin Conroy dying, dying of the Batman last week instead. The results of the technical issue, uh, I got it working. Um, basically what happened, I described it on the Discord, I think, but um, I was having some other issue. I was actually trying to get into my VFS webmail. It wasn't working for some reason. And I tried erasing my cookies with somebody's suggestion, and when I did that, it logged me out of Twitch. And then when I tried to log back in, it wouldn't accept my password. And I reset the password three times, and all three times, it still wouldn't let me log in. Um, it would let me log in on the phone app using the same password, so clearly I was using the right password. But it just wouldn't let me do it um, on, uh, uh, on the desktop. And so I, uh, I actually emailed tech support they didn't appear to be of any help at all they kind of just seemed to be avoiding answering my question and just kind of seemed like they just copy and pasted the um i got troubleshooting to-do list basically um so the next day i sat down to actually do that and i was like well i might as well try it one more time before i uh i try this troubleshooting list and then it worked suddenly so i don't know if they actually fixed something on their end or if there was something going on with the server. When I Googled it, it said it was a really common issue and it's usually an issue on their end, but that's not what they told me. I don't know. But it, uh, I had discovered it Tuesday after the stream. That's why when I raided uh, Mega Animation, I wasn't able to uh, actually get in the chat because it wouldn't let me without logging in. And that's when I realized it was messed up. Um, and when I Googled it and it said it was probably a server issue, I figured, oh, well the next day it'll work. And then I forgot to test it on Wednesday, and then Thursday right before the stream is when I realized it's still not working, and I got kind of stuck. Um, so here we are. So I don't actually know if I'm going to even do that dog adventure. My heart wasn't, I had kind of an idea, but my heart wasn't completely in it. Um, and it just kind of knocked the wind out of my sails for it, so I don't know that I'm going to bother with it anymore. Um, but we're going to draw Black Panther tonight. Um, and I'm not going to say who this Black Panther is, but it's not T'Challa. Uh, she is teased in the trailer, but they don't but you, they don't tell you who's behind the mask, and I don't want to spoil that for anybody, but I feel like since she's in the trailer, it's not a, uh, um, a spoiler to say that there is a female Black Panther that appears in Wakanda Forever. So that's what we're gonna draw here. Uh, I'm actually tempted, honestly, I kinda like her comic book costume. I don't dislike her in movie costume. I kinda like her comic book costume more. But I don't want to draw that because it'll kind of give away who it is. Because there's been a few different versions of, of Black Panther. Um, out there, a few, a few different people have worn the suit. And I felt like... Uh, I don't know. I don't want to apply the wrong thing. And I hope just saying that much isn't a spoiler. Don't look into it, basically. is what I'm saying. Uh, I liked Wakanda forever, though. I, uh, I thought it was good. And I think the general consensus for it has been positive, but I know not everybody. How are you doing, Mark?
totally. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? Okay. That was, I just, um, might have saw the post. I, I did a music video recently um, that went live on Monday. And not last Friday, but the Friday before that. Basically, all day Friday and most of Saturday was spent rendering layers for that. Uh, I drew Black Panther once on the stream before uh, when Chadwick was going to die. Remember the first time ever drawing Black Panther in the mask. I think I'm kind of mixed on with the Black Panther movie costumes, and I guess especially, I guess this particular version is a little bit more guilty of it. I like like the simplicity of the one in the comics. Like it's almost just black. Like there's barely any patterning on it all, and I couldn't resist. Less is more, though, sometimes, folks. Oh, sorry, I thought you were saying I did do... Um, I did that in the previous one, yeah. Or are you remembering that? And that's 
that's what you're referring to. Uh, hello, other Mark. We have two Marks among us now. Mark, did you change your name again? I know it was Dio Radhain again, but the, the, the Jub Hall thing? Like, I remember last time you said you changed your name. Has it happened again? <laughs> Is the question. No, okay. So I'm just not remembering the first half. Well, welcome, Mark. Also, Mark, meet Mark, Mark, meet other Mark. I think you guys were both on last time as well. Actually, no, because uh, Dio, you were on um, when I was doing the Mr. Sandman stream, right? And British Mark, he works. Uh, he was working on the movie that night, so he popped in at the very end. But I think you were already gone by then. So I guess the two marks have not met yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so uh, Mr. Anderson. Uh, is that the first time you've gotten to say that to somebody else? You see, Dio, if your name is Mark and you teach in a film school, there's only one way that people can ever say hello to you. <laughs> Congratulations to you then. I think I'm gonna take some liberties on this outfit. I'm gonna lean towards the movie, but I'm not gonna go. Yeah, yeah. So I think they overdo it a little bit here on some of her design work. Maybe I won't go all for it. I'm conflicted. Yeah, because uh, this Mark's last name is Anderson, so he also gets Mr. Anderson. Although I think you said you didn't get that one too often, right, Mark?
Parker! Uh, well, I, I mean, it's heyday isn't quite there, but I wouldn't say they don't less of them know about it. But I think that the uh, the room one is just funnier. Okay, so because this thing still actually uh, wants to censor shit, I didn't get that at first, Parker, but I know what you're referring to. Um, not a ton ton, but every once in a while. That's from uh, uh, Predator. <laughs> uh, I guess that's true with the Matrix, yeah. So she does have more on her suit, but I don't know, I'm kind of tempted to leave it like this. Less is more, you know? Here we go. Do another one of these. Oh, I will put more on her head, though. I just wasn't going to do any of the ones on her head. Taking some liberties now, too. Yeah, exactly. A little more for the vibe than anything here, I think. Alright, now we're gonna get. Uh, I figured this would be a quick ish one tonight. Um, I got a, another commission. <laughs> Never rains, but it pours, so I'm tr and it, I, it's a bit of a rush job, so it might be just as well, so I have a chance to get back to that afterwards. Next week will probably be a long one, though.
don't know if I should say yet who it is or whatever, but I have done some stuff for them before. And they have also done some stuff for me as well. Uh, anybody see Wakanda Forever, by the way? No spoilers if you have. All right then. I'm glad we had this talk. Fair enough. It'll be like what a month away or something like that. I finally got caught up on Andor, by the way, and uh, I am loving Andor. Like I kind of I had a hard time getting into it, not because of the mo uh, the show itself, but I just like I was still in the thick of trying to finish up certain things, and I was always stopping to watch things like late at night and I was just like never had the energy because it's a bit more thinky than a lot of the other Star Wars shows and uh, or all the other Star Wars shows for that matter and uh, and then I kind of started falling behind and everything so I finally 
did it last week. I was thinking it was done, actually. If I knew there was one episode left to come, which will be tonight, I might have rethought it. I might have waited. Because <laughs> I got really into it. And then, uh, and then I was like, wait, I gotta wait a week. But, um, I think it drops tonight. So we'll see. <coughs> Here's a question for you guys. Anybody ever have sleep paralysis? I've had it periodically over the years, and last night I had one of the scariest, technically this morning, I guess, had one of the scariest best of sleep paralysis I have ever had. Um, do you know what it is, Mark? So basically, sleep paralysis is you're essentially having a nightmare. And in my experience, but I think I, from what I understand, this is kind of the most common experience, is in the nightmare, someone or something will be coming for you, right? Something's freaking you out, in other words. And you actually are, in the moment, kind of aware that you're asleep, um, but you're too in it for that to matter and uh you kind of freeze like you literally have paralysis like within your dream and uh and you can't wake up um and it's sometimes it's referred to as old hag syndrome because uh back in the like i don't know how like way way back um there would uh people thought there was actually like a witch or something like sitting on their chest there's a famous painting as well i forget what the hell it's called offhand um that is uh, a woman lying back asleep and there's this like gargoyle thing sitting on her chest and that's supposed to represent sleep paralysis yeah exactly like you're aware of it but you can't do anything about it. you're frozen and then you kind of wake up screaming and you finally pull yourself out of it okay Oh wow! There we go. Yeah, I did a uh, Freddy Krueger drawing inspired by that one. Uh, I think the first year that I was streaming, actually. Yeah, there you go. I saw a horror movie one time that was all about sleep paralysis. It really didn't live up to its potential. I thought it was a cool idea, but yeah, I didn't just didn't quite get there. So last night I had, actually it was a first for me in a way because I had this whole thing where um, I had like a dream within a dream type situation. Oh, okay. I don't know if I knew that, but that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so like I basically, I woke up at like 5 a.m. this morning and couldn't fall back to sleep. And I almost gave up. And um, I kind of turned the light on, started looking around my phone and everything for a little while. And then I was like, uh, I really feel still like that. I gotta, I gotta turn the light on and try it for a little bit longer to fall back to sleep. So I did and I managed to fall back to sleep. Um, but then in the dream, I woke up and felt like, you know, just felt a little groggy and stuff within the dream. So then I walk out of my room um, and it takes me a minute to realize that like, wait a minute, this isn't my, my place. Where the hell am I? And then I turn around to see somebody approaching or something like that and that kind of freaked me out. So then I wake up. So now I'm still dreaming, but now I've woken, but in my dream, I've woken up from a dream and I'm in my proper room. So now I think I'm actually uh, awake and then all of a sudden this thing like jumps on the bed making this noise like uh when you're kind of rubbing a microphone or something it's kind of what it sounded like and it had long hair it was too dark to see 
what it was, and it had like dark or like long hair that was like hanging over my face. And it freaked me the fuck out and that and that was sleep pro. I was like frozen, couldn't wake up. I was like, holy shit, holy shit. I think, I don't know if I said it out loud in real life or just in the dream, but I think I said, who the fuck are you? <laughs> and I just, I could just barely squeeze out a whisper of it. It wasn't really like talking. Um, yeah, that was probably the free, I think because of that dream within a dream, it, that probably is the most, it's ever freaked me out. I've had it multiple times over the years, but. So yeah, sleep paralysis, do not recommend. there's always a cause but I think sometimes points of stress and stuff can cause it I don't know that I'm overtly stressed about anything at the moment necessarily if anything I've been kind of coming out of some stress because I've been finally getting caught up on everything and whatnot um, but possibly just because of my me waking up so early and then wanting to get back to sleep in this case might have been a stressor for it like I don't know I have found historically though with, uh, with my bouts of it is it's not always the case but usually when I get it um, I'll have it happen a few times um, in uh, you know a few nights in a like not necessarily in a row but like I'll have it happen two or three times in a short amount of time usually when I get it so um, so tonight might be interesting we'll find out <laughs> I think I have PTSD. Unless I've repressed something. They don't want to see me make it. They don't want to see me care. Anytime I make some progress, I can see that they compare. I think everyone's against me. Maybe something in the air. Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming and they're scared. I walk a straight path. How many can say that? So yeah, like I said, anxiety, stress. But that's explained how's it how it sets into it, I guess. Yeah, that movie, I remember, forget what it was called. But it's where I first heard of it being referred to as old hag syndrome by by some historically. Um, and the idea was that the thing in the dream that's coming for you is real, as you would assume probably from a horror movie. And yeah, the concept I thought was really cool, but the execution was pretty lame. It was, I wanted to like it.
is that exactly how I want to texture this? Because obviously it's going to be primarily black. But I think I know how I want to do it, but I keep changing my mind as I do stuff here. Have you ever had um, one of those dreams where you're aware that you're in a dream and you can kind of control what happens? I've never had one of those, but they sound fun. Oh yeah? And are they fun? You get like superpowers in the whole nine yards, just the drop of a hat, however you're feeling anything. Uh, proxies for like visual effects, Mark? Oh, just like fill, okay. But actually, would they be pro proxy shots because those shots are gonna be replaced with visual effects or are they shots that need to be shot later, pickups or whatever? I used to have a recurring dream where, like, the, the meat of the dream would be different every time, but um, I would have, like, I'd be able to fly in the dream, but I it would be like swimming, where I had to, like, kind of paddle th and kick through the air, and it was, like, kind of cool, but exhausting at the same time, so it was like, yeah, I can fly, but this is horribly disappointing, I would prefer it be Superman style.
Uh, oh, like low res versions of them? You mean? Gotcha, gotcha. And then you swap them out for the 4K or whatever once you got your your cut done. I hear you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Okay, I'm gonna throw one more accent in here. I don't actually mind this one. Like I said, even the dreaming one wasn't the same every time. It was just that one theme. I had another recurring one, uh, which I haven't had in a really long time. Uh, but it would be like I'd come home from school or something. And I would want to draw or do whatever I wanted to do, not necessarily draw. But like no matter how many lights I would turn on in the room, it would never be bright enough. It would always be too dark. get stressful sometimes not just because it's preventing me from doing whatever I wanted to do but like why is it not getting brighter in here I probably asked this before but on the topic of lucid dreaming and superpowers what would our what superpower would we want I think I would have to go with flight, probably, myself. Kinesis to go with it. Would you want that too? be a fun one is that your uh, your choice Parker or are you just throwing in other telly options Nightcrawler fan, clearly. Wait, 
What? I'm sorry, Parker, but you're not allowed to not be big on X-Men. That's like, that's, uh... Oh, that's a tough one. Actually, I think we talked about this before, because your only real X-Men exposure is the movies, am I right? Yes. I have to see where I am going, otherwise I could wind up inside this wall. Circus, I was this incredible night crawl. Yeah, so I think if your introduction was from the comics or the 90s cartoon, a very different story. Yeah, but no more so than you would expect for that at the time. Or do you mean compared to the the comics in particular, or just in general? I liked him as Nightcrawler. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you mean by later one, Mark? caught up on BTAS eventually, didn't you? One thing I'll say, if you play, if you try catch up on the uh, on the 90s X-Men, um, I think, because uh, I did a rewatch a few years ago, and I think the story, like the writing still holds up, but you can't expect the same level of animation that you get from BTAS and stuff. It, uh, I think they did pretty well with what they had to work. I didn't realize how much of this drawing was off frame. You guys gotta tell me this. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, some of the some of the sometimes the animation's great. Like the drawings are good. Like the designs are fine, but the uh, the actual like animation, like the movement, is sometimes uh, not quite what you want it to be. Uh, some of it um, works really well. Some of it, even at, as a kid, I was kind of like, oof, that didn't seem quite right. And so I feel like that is a worthwhile disclaimer to, to give to someone who has animation training under their belt. I think uh, you would need to, I think if you were gonna do it, Parker, because I knew that was gonna be your response, is uh, it would need to be, uh, um, if you're able to, it doesn't work for everybody, but my whole thing with uh, working while you draw or uh, watching stuff while you work, I meant to say. Uh, 
uh, one of them is, yeah. That's not a bad way. Uh, I kind of agree on uh, on BTAS. Are you referring to when they kind of brought it back with slightly new designs, Mark? Because I didn't hate that era, but it definitely wasn't, like, it was definitely a step down in my opinion. And I didn't hate all the new designs, but I also kind of bothered me on principle because there was no reason to change them. And then some of it wasn't even just like, oh, it's different. It's like, it didn't make sense, like, you know, like Batman can update his costume, like you can kind of get aware on that. But why is Killer Croc all of a sudden like green skinned instead of gray skinned? Like, how did that happen? I think it might have been, I, it might have even been a studio note, to be honest. Um, I think I knew at some point, like, I, I've watched a lot of behind the scenes stuff for that show, and like, I have a book about it as well, but I don't remember specifically, but like, just because they kind of took it, it was kind of gone for a little bit, and then it might have been a, a network note, being like, no, if we bring it back, it needs to feel new for the kids, kind of thing. Uh, which part when it comes to establishing, to establishers? You mean like the better episodes, kind of? Oops. Yeah. And like, she's one of the less egregious ones, because she could kind of change, she could change her outfit, um, you know, she could change her makeup approach, make her skin a bit paler. But some of them just look like completely different people. So I'm gonna do more texturing on this, by the way, but I'm gonna fill in the spot blacks first. Obviously, her outfit is going to be very dark. Actually, there might be another, another reason I don't agree with this as a good reason, but I think it might have been as well. It's because soon after they finished the Batman, the original run of B BTAS, they did the Superman animated series, and it had a slightly more streamlined kind of graphic design, um, which I felt like fit that series because Superman's like the man of tomorrow right like Metropolis is supposed to have kind of a retro futurism look um, and I think it was through the success of that that they kind of brought Batman back like they did a crossover and stuff so th they might have I feel like the designs would have worked well together still but I think that might have also been a motivation and actually now that I'm talking I'm remembering some stuff that Bruce Timm said he did comment that they sent so much stuff because most of the animation was done overseas and 
the more stylized and graphic and simplified their designs were, the more accurate the animation tended to be when it would come back from the overseas studios. So that might have also been, I think that might be their mentality when they did Superman, and then they felt like the animation results were maybe stronger. But the thing is, when they went back to Batman, they didn't just have the different design. Like, they did, they kind of lost the whole film noir vibe and stuff. Uh, B-Taz, then Superman, then back to B-Taz with the updated look, and then Batman Beyond, and then Justice League. Batman Beyond was awesome. I would love to see Michael Keaton play old man Bruce Wayne in a Batman Beyond movie. I don't know how likely it is, but I would love that. Here's my, my major geek dream for that. Um, and it'll never happen, but I love the idea of them bringing back Keaton as Old Man Wayne and actually bringing back Burton to direct it. I don't think he would ever do it and I don't know if they would even ask him because those movies are so made by committee at this point as well and I don't think Burton wants anything to do with that. But it would be kind of neat. I feel like he could, he could use something like that kind of a return to a classic kind of because he used to be able to do no wrong and he's been a bit more hit and miss in recent years and could use a commercial hit but if he did that through flashbacks and de-aging and stuff you could maybe then see what Burton's version of Two-Face would have been and Mr. Freeze and stuff Scarecrow like there's so many Batman villains that scream Tim Burton in concept that we never got to see. I think that would be really fun. Uh, you're probably not alone on that. I think a lot of people <laughs> would feel that way. Oh yeah, well I don't know if, De I mean, if Danny Villeneuve said he wanted to do a Batman movie of any kind, I wouldn't stop him. You split the difference, like you said, you can use him as an advisor. You get a newer director, known for doing some sci-fi stuff, or proven record of it at least. And um, if you do the flashback stuff, you get Burton involved on some level. And the flashbacks, whether they're directed by him or not, they, they're done in that style. So it fits together, you know? Oh yeah, totally. The shape is very... I love the shots of him inside the thing, too. They always look so cool. I get how it's a little harder to picture what Burton's 
style would look like applied to like a cyberpunk world. But you go Keaton, you kind of want to fit in with those movies to some extent. And you kind of want to reference his heyday as Batman. But you only have two actual movies to reference. So you'd want to fill in those gaps. But you'd want them to be stylistically appropriate, you know. And I think that's my a thing that I will never have, and I always want. Like I like I was saying, like I, there's there's so many Bat villains that are just screaming Tim Burton. And I would have loved to have seen what he would have done with them. Size the shadows a little bit more, and then I'll do my my texturing and stuff. So I, at this point, like, would if they do Batman Beyond, I would definitely want to see Keaton do it. But when Nolan finished his trilogy. I knew that they would want to keep Batman going because it's too much of a cash cow. And I just thought, because those movies seem to be so well received, that the uh, the best way to go about that would have been to then go. Because then you can kind of jump ahead in the future and you do your Batman Beyond and you're not really stepping on his toes. But, but no. Like, like, okay, I don't know. I don't know how serious you are. I'm mean, like, in theory, I feel like the issues with those movies weren't really him. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. If they, I think they'd want to stay as far away from that as possible, probably. Just a hunch. <clears throat> okay. Actually, you know what? Here, before I do this,
Uh, hello, hello, pow block. Thank you. Okay, remind me, pow block, because I'm almost, I'm like 98% sure I know you in person, but I'm forgetting your screen name. Help me out. And if I'm not, and I just made things weird, then sorry. But I'm pretty sure we met. I feel like I know that name. Yeah? Uh, thank you, Pow Block. I was asking if I know you in person, though, because I recognize your name, but maybe you've just been on the stream before. Might just need to remind me. Actually, no, wait. You're, uh, you're an artist yourself, aren't you, Pow Block? I think I'm remembering now. But have you been on the stream before? Am I right? Are you an artist? Remind me. Sometimes the screen names are hard to hard to hold on to, but I'll probably remember if I'm right and you've been on before. I'm sure I'll remember. Graphic designer guy. You're the, you're the, yeah, 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 you did the vector uh, I, Inktober's, right? I'm a little fried today. I did not sleep well last night. started panicking that I was forgetting somebody. Sometimes I'm better with real world names than I am with uh, screen names. Uh, okay. skeleton anatomy Um, I thought I remember. I thought I knew what I was gonna see. I, I don't. I like that drawing, by the way, that you sent. But I'm not offhand. 
remembering. I think I'm getting uh, mixed up. There's, we had a new, f we had a few new artists pop in at once a couple weeks ago. Were you the one that was um, uh, trying to get into more realism? Not that that example you sent me was an example of such, but. Okay, okay. Then yes, I do remember you, Pavlok. it was coming. I knew that was going to be the next one. <laughs> well, I like the jelly bean ones. The thing with realism is it's not just harder because there's obviously a lot more detail and stuff, but we just know what people look like too well. And so our eye uh, scrutinizes a lot more what we're seeing. Those of you who haven't been with us as long, if you're hearing this song for the first time, this randomly pops up on the playlist. No matter what I put in the search bar, eventually it feels like. And a lot of my musical choices are just in pursuit of not accidentally hearing music, Christmas music. But sometimes I just don't fight it. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot. Parker, I totally forgot about that. Are you uh are you in um uh Edmonton right now? I saw that on uh, Instagram or something. I totally forgot. What brought you to uh Edmonton? Also, thanks for the turkey, Pablo. Working on it, working on it. I see a rolling up Uber black Cadillac, high heel boots, and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad, oh, baby's hella bad. After her, there ain't no coming back. Wanna take a run at that? I think she's feeling me. Turn it up a few degrees. My imagination. 
This might not be as quick as I thought because of all this hatching I've committed myself to. Damn it. Okay, okay. And how are you enjoying it so far, Parker? Gotcha, gotcha. Smoke the paper in an effort of making more hatch lines. I can't remember if I said it before or not, but I'm going to Mexico again in December. Uh, the main reason I'm going is to visit my parents for Christmas. But um, the recharging will also hopefully happen as well for myself. Come back in January and tackle the final volume of Combat Fairies.
Uh, thank you, Pavlok. Sorry I didn't immediately recognize your name, but I do remember uh, you from last time once we uh, once we established. Um, so come back anytime. Hopefully I'll, uh, I'll remember the screen name next time. Sound, sounds good to you. We'll talk donuts when you get back. Uh, we'll see. I thought I would be done in less time than that, but hatching can be a slow business. As uh, Werner Herzog would say, hatching can be a dangerous business. All I can think about is donuts since Mark said that.
Stop it! A copyright strike for humming that, I wonder. <laughs> the intro animation for Pink Panther Strikes Again was done by um, Richard Williams, who wrote the animator's survival kit. I won a special achievement Oscar for um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> it took me a minute to realize what you were referring to. In my head, I was singing, It's fun to stay at the DMCA. Might beat Mark to the punch here. Other Mark, I mean, Dio.
I think she's done, folks. We'll do a little scribble shadow under here for her. throw a signature on there. There we go. The new current Black Panther. Um, uh, I don't know if we'll bother rating somebody. Saying, There's only three of us at the moment, so that might be... It's not, not much of a rate. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, thank you, Parker. Um, so that's it. I'll be back on Thursday unless Twitch blows up on me again, but I don't think it will. Um, and, uh, yeah, probably not going to do the dog adventure and move it on to the other one on the list. Um, but, uh, unless everyone was dying to see that, let me know if you were, but, um, have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.